morning and welcome to Winnipeg. And we might have a sunrise this morning. There was nothing to show you yesterday, that's why you saw nothing. But there, I got a feeling we're going to see the sun come up this morning. There's no cloud, so it's not going to be spectacular, but hey, maybe I'll show it at the end of today's video again. Now, I think what I should be doing here is finishing up those last eight 20 millimeter guns. Uh, I've already shown two or three of them being put together, so there's no use going into that. We do have a bit of a rollback. Uh, yeah, once again, I don't know how today is going to go. These videos, as I've said several times, they are very unscripted. I just sort of go with the flow. Some mornings I'll start going and I think it's going to be a really shorty and it turns out to be, you know, 40 minutes long. <laughs> and other times I think, it's well, I'm going to have lots to say today and, and it just doesn't work out. Stuff happens. Life happens. Yeah, life gets in the way of the model table occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad though that uh, I dragged this piece of plywood up here into the living room and made this model table. I have really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's going on, uh, well, a long time. <laughs> anyway, let's roll back. <laughs> I, w I was going to turn the cup so it said roll back. I forgot. Oh yeah, this is, this is a pizza day cup. Yeah, I got this from uh, Tennessee Jim. Thanks, Jim. Okay, I have topped off Jeff's cup here and we are ready to continue on on this beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Winnipeg. And uh, yeah, this time of year we could have a bunch of snow out there, so I, I feel, I'm feeling very fortunate. Now, uh, you remember at the beginning of yesterday's episode I was talking about how I was shooting that first scene in 8K in RAW. And for those of you who are camera buffs, now, now get this, I wrote down the statistics. That, that 45 seconds or less than a minute file that I shot there, it was 52 gigabytes big. <laughs> yeah, that's 52,000 megabytes. It, it filled up about a third of the memory card. And, and those NRAW files are just loaded with all kinds of data which make it really easy, well not easy, it actually makes it hard for somebody like myself, but people that know what they're doing, they can take that NRAW file and they can get something pretty nice out of it. My complaint was that I, I didn't think it was all that sharp and I didn't really, couldn't really sharpen it like Da Vinci uh, uh, Resolve does have a sharpening feature, but I didn't think it was any better than what I was getting before. Now, maybe it was. Anyway, uh, you didn't get to see it in 8K. If you watched yesterday's episode, uh, it, it was the whole thing was just uh, rendered in, in 4K. And, and I sent Nikon the 8K file, which, by the way, is still uploading. It's still uploading, and I started uploading it, oh, must be about four hours ago. When did I? What do we got here? It was. I upload, started uploading about six hours ago, and it's still uploading. I think it's up to around seventy percent uploaded now. Now it should go a lot faster than it is. I don't know why it's taking so long because I did a little bit of math, and I, and it's if it's fifty-two gigabytes or fifty-two thousand megabytes, my upload speed uh, for my internet is usually just. A, do I do the ping test? It's usually just a little bit over a hundred megabytes per second upload speed. And it downloads close to a thousand. I mean, it's very fast here in Winnipeg and, and I, I'm quite happy with it. Um, so, so anyway, that means that I should have been able to upload that 52 gigabyte file in 8.7 seconds or, or minutes rather. And, and it's been going for, like I say, hours, so I don't know what's the problem at, at Nikon's end, or maybe maybe it's not Nikon's fault. But I think maybe what's happening is that their server is just trying to absorb files from all around the world, from old guys like me that don't know how to use it. <laughs> 
Yeah. Anyway, I thought that's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, you know that those files are so humongously big. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure I'm going to get it figured out. I'll get it figured out. Yeah, and and uh, that thing with the with the audio ducking. Uh, well, I'll get that figured out too. Don't worry. <laughs> I want to be able to use it so that when I'm painting. And I can, I can have music playing most of the time, but when I start talking, it'll automatically duck the music and then bring it back again after I stop speaking. That's that's what's supposed to happen. But I think we talked about that probably three times now. We're, let's not talk about it anymore. Now, I want to see how my idea with the uh, poor man's arbor press here is going to work. I still want to try the idea that Mark was talking about where you where you would you'd have an A and a B mold and you'd squeeze the two together and the part would would form. Yeah, that's what I want to try and do yet this afternoon. And then I'm going to continue on. Uh, yeah, I went to all the work of lifting this thing up onto the table. I may as well use it, right? So let's uh, recompose here and uh, see what we can do. Okay, now picture this upside down mounted in the chuck. It's going to be the ram. Problem is, if I wanted to go come down on, on a rod or something like this, the chances of it, you know, slipping off one way or the other, if you know what I mean, is pretty good. So what I want to do is I'm going to file a little groove in... Uh, a little, a little, a little notch, you might say. There must be a faster way to do this. gonna throw the sparks that way. Maybe I wonder if I have a, a different different cutter. Um, let's try this first just just to get just get a little notch in it just so that it doesn't slip out. other eyes. put the macro lens on and bring you in. You can have a nice close look here. Okay, looking at it up close now, I can see that this uh, groove is is uh, not... Uh, I should have gone a little bit more this way. This shoulder is a little bit high. But maybe I'll just get rid of some of the burrs. At least it's not going to slip out. Okay, let's stick that on the chuck. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's going to work. See, what I need is something that's going to hold this down tight while I am uh, working at this uh, with the uh, farmer, you might call it. So let's just let's just try it here and see what's going to happen. Yeah, that should work. Okay, <clears throat> I think it's probably time for the macro lens now. It's going to come down pretty much in the center here. Now, I'm going to turn this chuck so that it's going to be I don't want to wreck this because this is this is one of the ones we want to keep, right? So does that look about halfway? Or should it go about there? I think that's probably I'm, I'm sort of looking in in the uh, monitor right now, so uh, so I'm seeing what you're seeing. Okay, now if I put my weight on the end there, like so. Okay, now I can get something in there to. Where is something? Something like this to kind of Am I going to end up wrecking this now? Or not? I will come in from the other side I'm trying not to get my fingers in your in your vision here. Okay, I have I have tried this and I I am not necessarily liking it. It is sort of working. And I can see where if a person was to make a, a proper A B die and you know something like this would actually you know in a mass production system would, would work. But for me I think uh rolling it is actually gonna be the best way to go. Okay, we tried it. Okay, we got ourselves an email from one of the viewers, and his name is Ed. And Ed sent us a link, a Facebook link. And uh, we've got these uh, three photographs here. That gives us a pretty good idea of what they're supposed to look like. I like this photo the best. Yeah. Now, Ed was a busy boy. He also sent us a link uh, where you can buy buy these things already uh, made up from, you know, 3D printed ones. So I'll, I'll see if I can find it here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you can see the uh, 
You can actually see the uh, flotation devices in the top. That, that's actually pretty good. Now, now the problem is they. Uh, let's let's back up a bit here. Okay, we change it to Canadian dollars. Okay, it's, uh, so it's almost fifteen dollars Canadian. Now I don't know where this place is. Uh, Model Monkey? Are they in the UK or who knows? Um, no, just for the fun of it, let's let's click Add to Cart. I'm not going to give them any of my information here. View cart, subtotal. Um, okay, to deliver to Canada, it would they would cost us uh, thirty-six dollars and seventy-three cents. Now I don't know if that includes taxes or what, but that's, that's not too bad. Might be. Well, something to think about. Yeah, Manitoba, Canada. That's where I live. Thanks, Ed. Now, I had wanted to do this while these pieces were still attached to the fret, and then I forgot. Um, now, now this longer one, this 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 will be fairly easy to do. I'm wondering if maybe I was to put the hole right in the middle, like the like this. Now, is this going to? Whoops. It wants to slide on me. It doesn't want to... I mean, if I come in from the other angle, probably going to block the light, but... Okay, and oops. It, it slides. It's sliding on the... On the... Uh, I'm going to go straight up and down here. It does not want to uh, cut. Let's, let's just, uh, maybe we'll do it the other way then. Mm, it's too bad that these things don't, f you know, bend at the folding line like they're supposed to, but you can, you can readily see why they won't, because, the, because this grill work, it's so easily bent. And, and it bends, you know, where it's not supposed to. Now, I'm wondering, just, just let me uh, check the monitor here. I wonder if Andy's bender would work on this now if I was to hold it down and then bend this up. Or is this little post, as you might, might call it a post here, is that going to twist 90 degrees instead of staying straight. I, I got a feeling it's going to twist. Yeah, for, for some reason these, these uh, folding lines have not been uh, made deep enough, if you know what I mean. Well, about an hour ago I was all gung-ho to keep going here, but that was an hour ago. And this is sort of a, you might say, a repeat I think it was yesterday evening. <laughs> yeah, I just got tired and played out. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And uh, a few minutes ago I started to think about something and I got busy on the computer and you might say wasted a bunch of time. Uh, but I want to show you what I've come up with. And uh, it has to do with this. Okay, I know that right now I should be putting together my 20 millimeter guns, but I got to thinking about something. And there's been uh, at least four comments recently in, uh, that have gone something to the effect of uh, you should bend towards the folding line. What we have here is two pieces of photo etch. And this V-shaped thing here represents the folding line. Now, remember, we're looking at this edge on, not from the top down. We're looking at it as if you were to look at it edge on, and it's magnified here probably, <laughs> well, you know how thin photo etch is, so it's probably a thousand times magnification going on here. Anyway, this is, this is the folding line. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let, let's take this, this uh, piece of photo etch here, 
and we're going to bend it towards the line. So watch how it goes. Now I'm <laughs> I'm not gifted in CAD. Uh, this is just Corel Draw, and <laughs> and it kind of works. Okay, and this one we're bending away from the folding line. Okay, now look at our corners. Um, I'll just move this a little closer here. Okay, yeah, the, the, this corner looks much more realistic. Now, mind you, I do realize that from arm's length, this corner is going to look square because it's going to be really, well, this, this little, what they were looking at right here is probably just, uh, you know, a hundredth of an inch big. <laughs> so uh, it, it's going to look square at a distance. But this one here looks more square when it's bent towards the folding line. Okay, that's why I bend towards the line. Last one. The end of my nose has got a little, little <coughs> divot in it. Kind of like the photo etch divot. <laughs> okay, yeah, all empty. I think we're supposed to have 52 or something like that. I, I haven't counted them since a few days ago, but uh, they're they're all there. Yeah, I'm glad that's done. What time is it, boys and girls? to the last drop or crumb you might say okay now there are two more pieces of pizza in the freezer pretty much exactly what like what you just saw there uh, so we're good for another couple of weeks um, all right let's uh, move on here now I don't know if uh, annealing these uh, while they were attached to the fret was a good idea or not. Uh, I, I noticed that I've sort of got some of them, you might say, a little bit on the bent side. Now, I don't know if that was because I was trying to wipe them down with the uh, alcohol and microfiber cloth or, uh, you know, to get the soot off. Oh, speaking of getting the soot off, uh, Jeff Donahue was mentioning that if you use a, a butane torch, so I went on Amazon this morning and I was checking them out, and to get a butane torch delivered here in Winnipeg would probably be around $40, $50 by the time you get the butane to go with it. Now, I, I don't know what it is. I used to think that butane and propane was the same thing, but, but maybe it's not. Uh, but uh, Jeff was uh, saying that you don't get soot on your parts if you use butane. Um, yeah. Now, uh... 
what what are we going to do here now? Uh, I think that the the best way for me to go with this is to finish these baskets up off camera at my leisure, sort of the way I did all of these 20 millimeter guns. And then we can just sort of move on. Uh, because I think I probably beat this to death as far as, you know, doing it on camera goes. I can't think of doing anything anything new. Um, now, if we if we go on, if we move on, we get to some plastic parts. I'm not seeing photo etch on any of these. Uh, this one, this one, this one. No, we can continue step six here and remain in plastic. Okay, why don't, why don't we do that? Why don't we just uh, move over here? It says make two. Well, I think we can count that high. Okay, everything for this windlass is on the K-sprue. Now, I don't think I ever knew why they call it a windlass. Um, unless it's because if you use it to help you pull the rope or whatever, you don't get winded. So that would mean you are windless. Remind me when I get back to the computer to uh, Google that. Why do they call it a windless? Okay, and we need one K27. Yeah, it's got some nice detail on it. K31, that's going to be our base plate. These seem to be quite a bit larger than the ones we made for the hood and the Rodney and the Bismarck. And these ones are have electric motors on them instead of uh, uh, steam powered. Um, or, or was the Rodney? It doesn't matter. Okay, no, I think we need a couple more pieces here. Okay, we need 51 and 52. And um, look at the delicate shaft coming out of the electric motor here. I, I hope there isn't flashing on that that I have to try and scrape off because I'll probably end up breaking it. Let's stick on the macro lens for this one. Gonna have to be careful with that. Now we also need number 52 here. Careful, Ron, careful, careful. Okay, 52. Here we go. I'm not quite sure how these are going to go together. I guess uh, we'll, we'll know when we look at the uh, manual. My, it's, uh, I just can't get over the, how, how small that is. Uh, here, this is just for perspective. That's my thumb. Okay, I was just starting to nip the sprue off of these parts here. And these are the last two. And uh, I'm noticing that it almost looks like arms, you might say. They are actually separate. They, these are these little arms that I'm just touching the edge of right now. Are actually separate from this plate part. They're, it's just held on just by a little bit up here where I'm touching right now. Also, a person would want to be careful when you're nipping that you don't nip right there. That you nip back, back here. Let's see if I can actually do it now. There we go. Yeah, you gotta leave this little square peg on in place. Yeah, whereas on, on the top, this other one, it it comes, it goes flush with the with the top of the with of the part. I'm just gonna do it off camera because I like to be able to put a little bit of downward pressure on it. That way, I make a much cleaner nip. There. Don't know if you can see it, but I hardly even need to sand that now. Okay, all our pieces now are pretty much ready to be glued together. 
and I did not break off the the shaft off of these electric motors but I'm just kind of curious what would be the diameter of that I'm going to measure it just for the fun fun of it um, I'll give it to you both in thousands of an inch and hundreds of a millimeter Okay, it's quite possible you're not going to be able to read the dial here. Now don't break that off, Ron. Don't break that off. Okay, so it's 13 thousandths of an inch. Actually, it's thicker than I thought it was. And in millimeters, that would be 32 hundreds of a millimeter for 33 33 hundreds yeah okay that's pretty good for plastic okay I think I'm going to be calling it quits here for today I'll go at these a little bit later in uh, this evening maybe and that'll be in tomorrow's rollback as per usual but there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about here and we're back to our photo etch baskets here let me lay this down. Okay, now you can see that the ribs for the basket are on the outside here. And somebody was saying that the ribs should be on the outside. Problem is, if we put the ribs on the outside, then the folding lines are going to be on the outside. And we want the folding lines on the inside, remember? So, uh, I don't know, it's sort of, you know, you can't win. Um, anyway. Thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.